How do you know if you're a storyteller? You love to tell stories. You've been telling stories since you could talk. You, I have people that have applied to my CBS program and they write in their letter of interest. I started writing stories when I was five years old or I watched, somebody just did, I watched SpongeBob, SpongeBob Square Pants and then I wrote the, ep the next episode of what I wanted it to be and she was like six. So you know, maybe you keep a journal. You are a writer, you're a storyteller if you love telling stories. What do great storytellers have in common? They have something they need to express. They want to delight someone, they want to scare someone, they want to move someone, they want their story to make an impact. And that's how you know. If you, if you have a burning desire to get your story and stories out there, you're a storyteller. What are the key elements of a good story? The key elements are you care deeply about the characters and that the story has unexpected turns. Things happen in it that you wouldn't have anticipated, but they're still within the world that the writer has created. But it always comes down to the characters. It's always about, do we care about them? Do we love them? Or can we not turn away because they're such a train wreck? It's the characters. That, we're, we're hardwired for story, and the heart of a story is character. And you can have a great plot, great plot, but if there isn't compelling characters to go with it, nobody cares. How does a storyteller make their projects more meaningful? Meaningful. I think the more personal it is, the more meaningful it is. If you're willing to tackle topics that are meaningful, that aren't just, um, this is so mean, but Emily in Paris, fabulous clothes. You gotta love the oh, locations, yeah. Yeah. but how meaningful is that really? If, if, if you're willing to explore with depth, you'll find meaning. And if you want to move people with your work, you will find stories that are meaningful. Otherwise, people aren't moved. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I mean, but it was a successful show and, and, you know, I watched it. It didn't move me in that way, but it was a light, it was very light. Right. We're talking about Emily in Paris. Correct. We all need entertainment too, especially during the pandemic and we're just coming out of it. I sometimes just still watch um, Big Bang Theory because I need to not think about anything. I, and Abbott Elementary, I adore because it's fun. And Emily in Paris is fun and it's eye candy, but is it deeply meaningful? I don't think so. How does a storyteller stay authentic? You constantly check in with yourself with a no BS detector. And when you create something, you say, is this true for me? Is this really true or am I chasing the marketplace and whatever I think people want is what I'm gonna give them. If it's true for you, then it's authentic. If, now sometimes true for you can be so niche that other people can't relate to it. So um, that isn't always the best, but check in with yourself. Make sure that what you're saying and the stories you're telling, that you care about them. And that's how you'll stay authentic. Yeah, I think that would be an interesting dilemma is, is how niche is your story. And we all think our story is relatable, mm -hmm. but um, you know, obviously not. And, and if the general audience is not in LA or not in New York, yep. those are gonna be different stories in some sense. Absolutely. Then they may not relate to it. It needs to be universal. When I was at CBS, and this will show you how old I am, we did Murphy Brown, oh, the yeah. first Murphy Brown. And at the time, 
that Diane English came in to pitch it. The, the word on the street was, don't do politics. Nobody can relate to politics. Nobody cares outside the Beltway. But those characters were so charming, so fun, so engaging, that politics didn't matter. So it's about the characters. Do storytellers see the world the same as everyone else? I don't think so. I think storytellers have a keen eye for what's beneath the surface. That's where the richness is. Interesting. You know, they, they talk about um, in books like the drama, the gifted child, right. things like that. Right. Uh, sometimes upbringing makes you more uh, aware of things, whether it's yes. a, a survival, it's, yes. it's by, by necessity. Um, let's say someone had a wonderful childhood and it's, it's not that, but they just maybe were more introspective. Maybe they were um, an INFJ or ENFJ or something and they, um, to go Myers-Briggs on you. Yeah. Right. They, uh, <laughs> they studied people. Storytellers study people and look for truth. If you've been unfortunate enough to have had a traumatic experience growing up or traumatic childhood, you probably know how to dig deeper and you're, you may not be afraid of confronting that. Some people are, and they don't go there. But some people who have worked through their trauma can bring it out in a story in a way that other people can relate to it. There's some stories that are so difficult to watch because they're so raw, but there's people who, who want to see that. How do you know you've met a storyteller? A storyteller is somebody that has a interesting, slightly off kilter view of the world. That's how you can tell that you're meeting a good storyteller. They, um, they see things slightly differently. They are aware of emotions that not everybody is, can access. And when I meet those people, I know it. I know it, and also, often they're raconteurs. They know how to tell a story with a beginning, middle, end, and hook me. That's one way to know you're talking to a storyteller. Leading with trauma? Hate it. Okay. <laughs> Hate it. Don't recommend it. Well, we're, we're in a new, you know, I'm Gen X, so we didn't really do that. We wanted to make right. sure everything looked fluffy and beautiful on the outside. Right. But we're in a new age where I'm actually pleased to see people are okay with different things. But I think we've become so much so as I'm this, and is that okay to do? Or, or w is that a little bit too much too soon? Let's, let's wait till the second date to talk about that. I couldn't agree with you more. On the first date, unless you're a certain kind of person, you're not going to go into the depths of your despair, the depths of your trauma. You need to meet someone and see what their ability to absorb that is. If you just lead with it, that can be overwhelming for people and, and it can be a turnoff. What I say to people is, because it's so hard to listen to, that's the turnoff. Um, what I tell people is, if you have worked through your trauma and you can talk about it in a way that isn't raw for you, and you can almost, this isn't quite it, but you can almost toss it off and just say this is a thing that happened so that the person listening doesn't have to feel sorry for you, then talk about that. If it's still so raw that you're emotionally bleeding from it, don't go there. Don't go there. It's, it's, it's too vulnerable. And people really are put off, I think, by somebody who's that raw. Some people love it, but most people will back away from it.